So more or less, all BMWs produced between the years 1993 and 2007 had an anti-theft system that now, well over 10 or 20 years later, can result in some fairly drastic consequences if, and usually when, these systems go bad. It's important to have a general understanding of how each generation of security system works, as these systems, when failed, can either cause your car to not get any fuel or to not crank over, depending on the generation of security. Starting with the first generation of anti-theft introduced by BMW, we have what's called simply drive-away protection. This system was introduced to all current production models in September of 1993 and was implemented for just three months until December of 1993. This drive-away protection is a fairly primitive system and essentially all it does is checks to see if just one of two conditions are met. All the DME cares about with this system is that either the doors of the car are unlocked or that the code function on the onboard computer has been cancelled. For those who don't know, the code function is basically like a keypad, but for your car, where the computer asks you to put in a four-digit code before the car is able to start. If your drive-away protection system has gone bad, then you will likely know because you'll be experiencing a condition where the car is able to crank over but won't start. This is because the system will cut fuel from the motor until it receives a signal that either the doors are unlocked or that the four-digit code is entered into the onboard computer. Next up, we have EWS-1. This system was installed on all production models that were manufactured between January of 1994 and January of 1995. This system actually functions extremely similarly to the driveway protection system, where it needs to detect that the doors are unlocked or that the code has been entered in order for you to start the car. The main difference here, though, is that EWS-1 does not interact with the fuel injection whatsoever. It only has control over the starter mobilization relay, which was introduced alongside this system. Symptoms of a bad EWS system, or more commonly the starter relay, will involve your car not cranking over whatsoever when you turn the key. Besides that, not a whole lot more changed. So now let's move on to EWS2. So EWS2 is a pretty significant step up from EWS1 in terms of what systems interact with each other. This system was introduced in January of 1995. It kind of varies by chassis on when it was taken out of production. Because I'm really lazy, I'll just put each chassis end of production day on screen for you to read. So the EWS2 system is a decent bit more complicated than previous generations. Like EWS1, however, it will still result in a no crank, no start condition if it goes bad. Before jumping to the conclusion that the control module itself is bad though, it's important to look at the systems that interact with it and test each of those out. EWS2 brought about with it the introduction of transponders and BMW keys, as well as the ring antenna and the ignition barrel. When you put your key in the ignition, what the car does is checks to verify that yes, the ignition barrel is the same one that came from the factory at the DME, and that the key is the same as well. This means, unfortunately, that if you're ever interested in swapping out your DME, you literally need to install the DME's corresponding ignition barrel and use the corresponding key so as not to give your EWS2 module a panic attack. It's starting to get kind of crazy, right? Don't worry though, it gets worse. In September of 1996, EWS3 3.2 was born. This system was included in all E38 chassis cars produced between September of 1996 and May of 1997 as well as all E39 chassis cars from March of 1997 through until September of 1997. So now, the big change from EWS2 is that cars equipped with this system now check when you're unlocking the car that the key is the correct key that came with the car's DME. On top of this, these cars now have a clutch switch that can and often does go bad. That tells the DME whether your clutch is pushed in or not, when you go to start the car, your EWS3 module sends a signal to the ring antenna that checks to see whether your key contains the right password and sends that password back to the EWS module. That password that's com gets compared with the code stored in its memory and then passes that password through to the DME. Think of the EWS module as a bouncer to a bar, basically. Oh yeah, and when your key's password gets accepted, the EWS module goes through and changes the password, just in case. EWS3 3.3 was implemented in May of 1997 for the E38 chassis and September of 1997 for the E39 chassis and lasted through until the end of production. 
On top of this, E46s, E52s, and E53s all have this EWS3 3.3 system. It's honestly really similar to the 3.2 system in terms of the starting procedure, except for a few changes. The EWS module now has something called the rolling code table that it uses to store essentially a list of 200 passwords that get checked with the DME once the key is turned. If one of these passwords is correct, then all is fine and you're able to drive. If not, then you have a no crank, no start condition. Lastly, we have EWS 3D system. This was implemented in just BMW Z3s that were produced from January of 1999 until the year end of production. Think of this system as a hybrid between EWS 2 and EWS 3.3. The EWS module has the same style of password system as seen in EWS 3, but the modules are now even more married to the DME than a traditional EWS 3 system. And this is due to a lack of a K bus. The biggest takeaway from this all though is that you should know that if your car has any sort of EWS system, as opposed to the drive away protection system, these systems going bad on your car can and will often uh, result in a no, no crank, no start condition. So just be sure to look out for that if you've checked a million other things and still have not been able to find the root cause of your issue. Anyways, though, uh, let me know if you guys want to see any similar semi-in-depth videos like this one or if this video is helpful at all. Uh, and if anybody has any requests for maybe what I should talk about for the next video, I'd love to hear them. Anyways, thanks everyone. Take it easy.